Hello, my name is Eleanor and I'm a self-employed horticulturalist working in Sussex. I own my own business and have done for six years and I just wanted to talk about horticulture today and gardening and make it more accessible for everyone because it always seems like a really unachievable thing to have like a vocational career. Today I'm going to talk about studying horticulture in COVID-19. Obviously horticulture is an extremely practical subject, that's how it's seen, we work outdoors, we work you know in people's gardens, so to study horticulture online during a pandemic might leave people confused. Horticulture actually involves a lot of theory. It's very manageable theory, but it's a lot of theory. A lot of it is very science-based, obviously, because horticulture is a science. There's a lot of theory that can be applied to the practical work that you're allowed to do in maybe a year or so. I have no idea when we're gonna be allowed out or free. Being able to study horticulture as a theory from home is actually a really strong advantage because when you're out and about in the field, you can apply that knowledge to your practical skills. So you'll know how to wield tools correctly, how to prune things correctly, how to sow seeds correctly, which seeds to sow when and which plants to plant where because you've learned that theory knowledge in whilst you've been studying and you can apply it to the practical. Obviously studying horticulture in COVID-19 can be extremely frustrating, I understand completely because you really want to study the practical side. When I took my course, which was a city and guilds at a vocational college, like half of it was practical. We'd be in the, in the classroom and they'd be like, oh, you know what, let's just get out of here and go. Or you're working with plants, that they've trimmed and you have to ident like identify them and they're in the classroom and you're with the plants or you're redesigning a border or you're doing work experience and you're hedge trimming with your classmates. I do understand it's really frustrating. As horticulturists, we're very like outdoorsy people. So to be told to stay indoors all the time or inside and study just the theory is really quite intense. So like don't put pressure on yourself to learn it, go at your own pace. If you've signed up for an online course, obviously try and keep up with their pace because that's a whole other set of rules, but if you're just studying for yourself and on your own, take it at your own pace. I'm gonna discuss the different options for online studying today. There's a few different ones that I think are really good options and lots of them are low cost or free because I know that's really important as horticulturists. We don't make thousands and thousands of pounds, especially if you're a student. So it's important to keep things like on the free side or the low cost option. And this is great as well if you're not completely 100% sure that horticulture is gonna be the right subject for you. I didn't know in the beginning and it was a real leap of faith and obviously that leap of faith really pulled off. It wasn't that much money to study, but I'm really, really glad I did. And I'm really glad that I had the support there. But if you don't have those things and it's quite intimidating, then these course options are quite good for you. So some of the free options include social media. Obviously there's Instagram, Facebook, and people's like personal blog websites. These have tons of information on people that study horticulture and work as gardeners, give out information all the time that's free, free information constantly. They're trying to like say what they've learned and help out other people in the community because it's such a vast subject. Having people tell you, you know, oh, this plant does this, it's a new plant or a new variety is really, really helpful. So information like that is available everywhere. If you go into the people I follow on Instagram, you'll find a lot of examples there. They have many years experience, so they really know what they're talking about a lot of the time. It also really focuses you on a niche. So there's a, an influencer called Charles Dowding and he created the no dig method and talks about it all the time and has loads of workshops and studies about it. And that's really helpful if you already know what sort of part of horticulture you want to go into. Find people already in that field and already studying that thing, you can relate to and connect with and learn what they're learning at the same time. There's also podcasts. Obviously there's the RHS podcast, which has a banging theme tune or used to, I haven't listened to it in a while, shame but uh, has a banging theme tune that you can listen to. They talk a lot about um, specialist jobs, specialist pruning, different times of the year, different seasonal jobs and interviews and also Chelsea. So they go through a whole range of things. I'd say this is quite intense if you're new to gardening, but it's definitely a good resource. And obviously there's YouTube and I'm gonna be like, I mean biased about this one because I'm on here, but I'm just talking about horticulture itself in general. I haven't specified any sort of learning techniques yet or any sort of niche in horticulture that I'm actually teaching. I'm just telling you to get into it and get stuck in. So I'm obviously biased and there's other people on here as well. Like Charles Dowding has his own YouTube. I'm gonna use his as an example. You try and find someone who isn't a white man to give an example of in horticulture. I apologize, but I have no other people to sort of show off. These are one of my only options. Another free option is vocational college if you're 16 to 18. I definitely, if you're that age range and even though it's Corona, I definitely jump in and try and 
get yourself signed up for that because they are running online tutorials at the moment. The practical side just is off at the moment, obviously, because you can't go into classrooms. But I definitely recommend signing up for that whilst you're in the age bracket. I don't know if it's completely free all the time. It depends on your, uh, you know, your situation. There's also loads of grants available if you can't afford things like this, if you get in touch with your teachers or just go and have a virtual interview with your teachers and see what they have to say because there's loads of options. I know lots of people on my course were over 18, couldn't afford the course rate and there were lots of things that could be done to help them pay for it because obviously this is meant to be an accessible course but they have to charge because it's there's loads of practical sides to it and teachers have to be paid and things like this so money does have to be involved but it can be free if you're 16 to 18. There's also lots of free guides on the internet. I know the BBC website does free gardening guides. I don't know how in depth it goes. I wouldn't recommend it as like your only tutorial. Qualifications are really important but if you're just like as I say dipping your toe into horticulture and you're not 100% sure this is something you want to do definitely start off reading free guides on the internet. Just type in gardeningguides.com or something and it will definitely come up with things but the BBC offers a little sort of tutorial on studying horticulture and what qualifications you need is quite old school it doesn't or it doesn't include like the new online things you can google that i'm going to describe in a minute but it does have useful information about BTEC qualifications and vocational skills so go and take a look over there i'll leave any links in my bio as well so you can go down and click that those are all free examples but these are going to be low cost to high cost all these online courses that i'm going to say in the websites that they come under it depends on the course you click as to how much it's gonna be. Lots of them range from like 50 pound, 90 pound, up to like thousands of pounds if you're doing a diploma or a degree. So you have to find the course that's right for you and I can't say it's gonna cost nothing, but, and it might cost quite a lot, but then it's good to have options. Online courses, there's the HCC Correspondence College. They're a horticultural college online and they offer lots of great courses. I've not used them personally, but they're reviewed well by fellow horticulturists, so I think that's great. They also offer courses with and without exams, which is really important because obviously if you're studying horticulture, you're not necessarily geared up and academically minded in that way to take exams all the time. I know I'd find that extremely pressurizing and I didn't have exams on my course either, which is good. There's the ADL and they currently are offering 25% off in coronavirus because you can study from home and they want people to study more obviously so you get a 25% off discount so it's worth checking them out first. They do a lot of courses that can get really specific and are a real niche and that's really helpful if you're just starting out but you already know what course you want to do or if you're like me and you'd like to further your education and I know what path I've gone down, I know where I'd like to go in the future so I could study a course there and be really specific about the course I'd like to take. Another one is the ACS distance learning course Courses. they're also great I'll leave that link below too and then there's obviously the RHS courses which are probably the most spoken about these are very theory based and very heavy and they have exams at the end which you have to sit in person I don't know if you currently have to sit them in person I wasn't there wasn't much information on what they're doing in corona at the moment so even if you're a distance learner you have to find a college to take the exam in and the exam is quite heavy and intense I definitely recommend this if you're like really serious about horticulture you already know what you're going to go into and the field and that you're very academically minded good at memorizing and this isn't to put you off it's just to make you aware of what the course is it's very theory based but lots of people have like thrived off it I think it's a good course there's a level one and a level two so you can go into the entry one uh, it's just completely depends on your learning style and how committed you are to learning horticulture not in a time sense just in a mental sense you know how far am I going to take this is it going to be a career sort of thing because I think the RHS course is definitely for career horticulturalists and that one is a little bit more expensive there's obviously books and magazines and these cost money from I mean probably like 1p on the dreaded Amazon which I hate saying that word and I really don't recommend but if you can't afford books it's definitely a much more accessible way to buy them so I'm not going to frown on it too much and just don't use it all the time and it's fine. So Amazon and independent bookstores and obviously magazines, signing up to a magazine, you can often get a good deal of like 5 for 20 quid throughout the whole year especially at the moment so I really recommend using resources like that and obviously books they go from being sort of memoirs all the way up to real educational like textbooks. I think it's really important to explore all types of gardening and read different books. 
and in magazines especially there's a lot of good how-tos so if you're gardening outside if you have the space if you've got a windowsill if you've got a bit of garden if you've got an allotment if you've got an aquascape if you've got anything magazines will give you how-tos and connect you with people on social media and often articles are written by people that are good horticulturalists and very professional and there's a good variety so you could at least relate to one of them and follow them on instagram and find out what they're doing in their tutorials so it becomes very accessible and then obviously one of the higher costs is the option that i chose which was vocational college i think this is cheaper than rhs if you're an adult learner 18 plus and I think these are absolutely great. I'd absolutely recommend a vocational college. You're supporting local colleges in your area. They have all the equipment, all the foundation to build your career and you meet like-minded people and you network with people in your area. So I think these are really solid choices. So just to sum up, every bit of experience counts. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and don't think this has to be a long-term career. Like they tell you like, if you're going to uni and you feel like you're, cause you're paying that much money, you have to do that career forever or put your degree to use. Because this is less money, you can take it a lot less pressure and take things a lot more easy. And just like have fun with it. Horticulture is all about fun and learning and it's a vocational skill. You're always working with your hands. So any experience you can get during COVID-19 lockdown, do go out and get it, even if it's tiny or what seems tiny, every bit of experience is invaluable. So just go for it, have fun. And I hope one of these online courses, one of these suggestions is gonna be really useful. As I say, I took the City and Guilds diploma and I loved it. I hope this video has been useful and I'll see you on the next one.